this video, I'm going to talk about tertiary colors. Tertiary colors are the colors in between a primary and a secondary. And you get them by mixing the primary and the secondary together. Now, all of the tertiary colors, they have their names that they're called in the Crayola crayon box. There's macaroni and cheese and teal or something like that. But in art class, we call them by their proper name, which is the primary color followed by the secondary color. So this right here will be red-orange. Not orange-red, red-orange. So our tertiary colors are red, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, green, blue, green, blue, purple, and red, purple. I'm going to kick things off with red orange. All right, so I have my brush, I've got fresh water, and I already have the colors that I mixed when I was making my secondary colors, so I can use these. The only thing is I'm going to have to mix a bit more orange, so I guess I'll start with that. I'll make myself some more orange, some yellow. In my brush, white, and some red. Let's see. Don't worry about getting it exactly, exactly. That's never going to happen. Just get as close as you can and then call it good enough. All right, so I've got some more orange. Now I'm going to take a bit of that orange, and I'm actually going to start to mix right here on my palette. So like that. Get it all off there. Clean my brush. Then I'll get a little bit of red. I don't need a lot. And I'm going to mix these together. I don't know. I think maybe I'll get a little bit more red. So clean my brush. White. A bit more red. There we go. I like the look of that better. Make sure it's well mixed. And then paint. Here's where I really need to start making sure I have straight lines. These things are starting to run together. Now I'm going to be using up pretty much all of the red-orange I mixed. If I was planning on covering a large area with this, I would have mixed more to begin with. But remember, I can always make more. All right, there's my red-orange. Clean my brush. Next up, I need yellow-orange. So I'm going to start with my orange that I already made. Put it on my palette. Clean my brush. White. And then some yellow. Mm. Yeah, that looks good. 
and mix. A reminder, yellow is our least powerful color, so you can use more of it without overwhelming the color. Try not to spread your puddle too far when you're using a palette. Okay, you want to keep it all in one area because then it's going to dry slower. If you spread it super thin, it's going to dry really fast. So keep it contained. I need a little bit more yellow. Trying to be careful not to spread it too far. All right, and when I'm happy, and I think I am, I will paint it. This is actually looking a little bit streaky. I don't think I mixed it well enough. A little more mix. And then I'll just kind of keep painting over it. I'll all get blended as I paint. Doing my best to keep my lines smooth. I am working a little bit fast. To go slower, it'll be smoother. Okay, so that is yellow orange. Next up is yellow green. So I clean my brush. And I grab some green that I mixed earlier. Put it on my palette. In my brush, white, grab yellow, and being careful not to spread it out too much. Oh, I actually think I could use a bit more yellow. So I wipe off my brush, clean it. More yellow and mix. better. my yellow green. Now it's time for blue green. So I rinse my brush. Wipe. Grab the green from my palette. Clean my brush. Grab some blue. Now remember, blue is the most powerful color, so I should only need a little bit. You can always add more, but it's harder to take it away. 
and I mix. And I think I can use a little bit more blue in here. Just gonna wipe the extra paint off my brush, clean it, wipe, get some more blue. Mix again. Make sure it's well mixed. The color on your brush is all even. Remember to keep your paint together. If you spread it out more, it's going to dry faster and then you won't be able to use it for as long. Blue green. almost out here, but I should be able to get through this section. Okay, there we go. Next up, blue, purple. Clean my brush. Wipe. Grab some purple from my palette. Spot. Kind of twisting it to kind of almost squeegee it off my brush. Back clean. White. Some blue. Remember, I can always add more blue, but it's hard to take it away. a little bit more. Now, an expert level trick, if you think you can be neat, you don't have to do this, you can keep cleaning your brush. Sometimes, see how I have paint on my brush, I have a good amount of paint here. If I rinse my brush, I'm going to lose some of that paint, and I don't have a lot of uh, blue-purple. So instead of rinsing my brush before I get blue, I can carefully just swipe in the corner of my blue. Now my blue has a tiny bit of purple in there now. I don't know if you can see it. So I have contaminated my blue, but the blue is confined to the edge. So I haven't contaminated the whole thing. I wiped from the edge to get that blue. So there's still lots of usable blue in that section of my palette. Now, if you think that that's gonna get too messy for you, go ahead and keep cleaning your brush between colors. in my blue purple. Alright, the purple's done. And last but not least, we have red purple. So I'm gonna clean my brush, wipe, grab some purple from my palette, twist it on. Perfect. Now I'm gonna do my expert trip and take a little bit of red from just the edge. A little bit more. And mix it. A little bit of a 
while there's something in there. I need a little bit more. Just gonna swipe some more. Mix it in. Alrighty, and when I like what I've got, just make sure it's mixed all the way. I'll paint it in. So the red, purple, and the purple do look a little bit similar. That's just because of the pigment of paint. It's hard to get them to look super, super different. And here we go. That is a completed color wheel. I will have an image up on this assignment on classrooms that you've got colors to match it to. And you are going to attempt this assignment, mixing these colors as best you can. Good luck.